Hello and welcome back to the Government Relations Report. I'm Evan Lukadakis, here to fill you in with what's going on in the home building industry at the national, state, and local level. So to kick things off on the national front, OSHA recently released a set of 53 FAQs to provide guidance to our employers and employees on silica standards for construction. Now, if you remember, OSHA passed the most far-reaching regulatory initiative for home construction back in March of 2016 to the tune of $5 billion per year. Through the Construction Industry Safety Coalition, NAHB was a main contributor to help our members navigate this complex regulation. Our involvement in all of this stemmed from a myriad of lawsuits challenging the rules legality, and in case you want to check out the FAQ list, I provided a link to it in the video description. Now, moving on to the local level, I'd like to first give a shout out to two of our guys who are known around the greater New Orleans area as subject matter experts in home building. Our board member and builder, Bruce Laburn, was tapped by Jefferson Parish Council member Cynthia Lee Shang to serve on the Hazard Mitigation Plan Advisory Committee. Boy, that's a mouthful. The purpose of this committee is to create, develop, and implement practical, manageable mitigation strategies that help reduce our community's risk to natural hazards. Thank you for serving and representing the HBA, Bruce. And secondly, our executive officer, John Luther, was tapped by Jefferson Parish Council member Jennifer Van Ranken to be a part of her District 5 Revitalization Task Force, which is looking for avenues to promote assets in the area and encourage commercial and residential growth. So the important thing to note from these two shout outs is when government asks the HBA to be a part of the conversation, you know your interests have a seat at the table, and that's why we work hard to maintain our relationships with government leaders. Well, there's never a shortage of news coming from the New Orleans City Council, which recently made some moves in regards to mandatory inclusionary zoning. And I know I talk a lot about this, but it's highly important. So back in early August, the Community Development Committee sent a motion to the council to vote on allowing the CPC, or the City Planning Commission, to study implementing mandatory IZ in New Orleans. What's concerning is that when the motion was presented in committee, it didn't even include a provision to study using incentives to help offset the cost of building affordable housing. But thankfully, Councilmember Moreno added an amendment which rectified that. She also brought up an important concern over a provision that would allow single parcels of land to become mandatory IZ zones by request of a developer or a council member, which led to John Luther pointing out in testimony as arbitrary and capricious. Ultimately, the council did vote on allowing the CPC to conduct the study, but yours truly had this to say about mandatory IZ at the council meeting. So take a look. Across the country, Major U.S. cities have implemented mandatory IZ policies, and the data illustrates its negative results. I specifically want to highlight Dr. Edward Glacier of Harvard University, who concluded that inclusionary zoning policies act as a tax on housing, which reduces supply and drives up costs. So we're keeping a close eye on the study, and even working with CPC staff to provide information regarding mandatory IZ's detrimental effects. We'll keep you updated as the study moves along. And that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank you for tuning in. And as always, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to give me a call on our office line at 504-837-2700. Or you can send me an email at evan at home-builders.org. Thank you again, and until next time.